You're tuned in to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, guiding your gridiron journey, none other than your host, former NFL lineman, Ross Tucker. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a monster Monday that we are recording almost on Monday. I just got back to the hotel room. I don't know if I told you guys this or not, but I am in Midtown Manhattan. I was at the CBS Broadcast Center all day because I was Super Bowl backup along with Tiki Barber. So I just got back to my hotel room, obviously still very amped up. So we're doing a Monster Monday very late on a Sunday night so that you guys have it for your commute tomorrow morning and so that I can just hop in the car and drive back to Pennsylvania right when I wake up tomorrow morning. College draft will be a little bit later. We are, of course, presented by DraftKings, and we got a lot to talk about as it relates to the Super Bowl. There are other things that we need to dive into as well around the NFL But we got to start by giving out some winners because I forgot to do that on Friday out in Las Vegas. Shout out to Peter Green, who gave us a Facebook review. Really appreciate that, Peter. At Ross Tucker Pod, Facebook review, a great way to go ahead and be the Spread the Word winner. Sponsor confirmation email winner, Matt Syvertson. He went to westshorehome.com slash Ross, scheduled a free estimate. That's all you need to do to be a winner. And then the YouTube shout-out winner, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL, is Anna Gray. So, Anna, make sure you let me know who you want the shout-out for, Ross at RossTucker.com. And then the other two, uh, spread the word winner, sponsor confirmation email winner, make sure you send me that uh, email with your address and if you have a preferred p- press pass as always it's a new week we will have new winners as a reminder we are three days a week now that it's the non-playing season so that means likely Wednesday and Thursday most weeks including this week and as I mentioned college draft Emery and I will record that when I get back to Pennsylvania he's actually out still in Las Vegas so college draft will be a little bit later than it normally is. Patron of the day, patreon.com slash RT Media is Eric Richards. It's Big Show time. The Big Show. All right, Ross. The Chiefs, they won a historic battle in overtime against San Francisco 49ers. They won Super Bowl 58, 25, 22. What an awesome football game. Just an awesome, awesome football game. You know, I don't really care who wins these games as much as anything else. I want it to be a close game. I don't know that I was loving overtime and having to stay up later, but as long as it's a close game, (laughs) I will absolutely take it. What's interesting, just in terms of some of the themes, I guess, that jump out to me, Jack, what's interesting is that it was not, I I would say, for a lot of the game, a particularly well-played game. You know, I mean, I felt like there were some major mistakes, certainly, by both teams. You know, uh, critical errors, obviously the turnovers, right? Mahomes had a horrible pick that he normally doesn't have. You know, both McCaffrey and Pacheco had bad fumbles that aren't usually an issue for those guys. Uh, And then special teams. I mean, special teams was gigantic in this game. Butker obviously made the long field goal. Kudos, I would say, to Moody for the two long field goals he made. But ultimately, you know, the the ball going off of Luter's leg and then, uh, you know, Ray Ray McLeod not able to cover it. He should have jumped on the ball. That was gigantic. And then, you know, the blocked extra point was huge as well. In fact, you know what? I'm going to make I'm going to make the the heart racing moment that that muffed punt by Ray Ray McLeod. Did you know that heart disease risk factors such as diabetes or high blood pressure can increase your chance of a heart attack by up to 2x? Learn more and assess your heart risk factors 
at checkyourheartrisks.com. Brought to you by Bear Aspirin, the official sponsor of Fans Hearts. I have been in those special teams meetings. They go over situations like that over and over and over again. If any of your teammates as the punt returner are near where the ball's coming, you say as loud as you can, either poison, poison, or Peter, Peter, so they know to scatter. I feel like Ray Ray McLeod did that, but he did it too late. I felt like Ray Ray McLeod should have caught that ball in the air and left no doubt. And then once the ball went off Luter's uh, foot and was on the ground, you fall on the ball, Ray Ray McLeod. He tried to scoop and run with it. You just fall on the ball. Two critical errors by the special teams for the 49ers ended up being the bare heart racing moment. And I think ultimately the biggest swing play, biggest difference play in the game. As for the rest of the game, uh, you know, it's interesting. You know, so many of the things, Jack, that Steve Fezzik says on the Even Money podcast, really I felt like came to fruition, right? You know, he talks often about, by the way, why are you wearing a hat and sunglasses right now? I feel like we need to talk about this before we get to the tuck stakes. Side note, before that, can we talk about how you got to the last day of the season before you finally lost your voice? I can tell you're getting a little raspy there. But no, well, these you are... know what's funny? You know what's funny, Jack? It's actually better than it was. I, I have talked very little since Friday morning. So Thursday night, before I got on the red eye to come back to Pennsylvania, I went to um, Jason Kelsey's party, like the New Heights party, right? So all day, Thanks for the Jack, invite. What's that? I said thanks for the invite. I didn't get a plus one. I, I thought about it, but I didn't get a plus one. I wasn't going to like, hey, can I get a plus one for my 23-year-old producer? I thought about it, dude. I really did. But I didn't even know how I got the invite in the first place. So I just got an email to my email address. I found out it was Kelsey's marketing director. Uh, shout out Emily Reese, by the way. She's awesome. Um, but uh, it's pretty funny. But no. So Thursday, I did the same thing I did all week, Jack, right? Which was five to what? One, at least straight through, recording shows on Radio Row, Westwood One preview show. Five to one, I'm talking. Legit talking for eight hours straight, okay? Then I went right from there, had multiple meetings, stopped by the hotel briefly, before I went to and got all my bags ready. Then I went to Kelsey's party. And, you know, when you're drinking beers in all those meetings and then at Kelsey's party and the music was loud. So I'm like talking over the music. And then you take the red eye back and I maybe slept two and a half hours. Man, Friday, Jack, it is a good thing. We didn't have to do stuff on Friday that we had recorded Friday show on Thursday because my my voice was toast Friday, not good yesterday, and it just came back today. But this is how I would have sounded if they lost power in Las Vegas for the Super Bowl. This is how I would have sounded if if me and Tiki Barber and Brent Stover had to call the game. I sat I sat in my chair ready to go on at a moment's notice for nine hours the pregame show started at two i sat there from two to eleven i had maybe three bathroom breaks and and they even brought like the dinner they brought the sushi to me i got a salmon avocado roll and a spicy tuna roll but anyway nine hours two to eleven i sat there and was never called upon (laughs) never never was called into action so anyway my voice is actually better than it was. Thank you for noticing, though. Um, did you say why you're wearing the hat and sunglasses? Oh, no, I just got this nifty hat because, you know, we had a work trip, so I got some swag. And then these are Super Bowl 58 sunglasses. So I felt it was a nice little opportunity to wear those. Nice. Future's so bright for you, Jack, <laughs> at 23 years old. you got to wear shades. All right, let's get into the, the rest 
of this game. Although, you know, before I get into the rest of the game, I want to make sure everyone knows it's all about westshorehome.com slash Ross. I gave the shout out earlier for the winner. I basically give you guys the answers to the test, right? It's not too late to order a story for a loved one from myfrontpagestory.com. I automatically will send you a signed autograph if you do that. It's not too late for the greatest Valentine's Day gift ever. And you can always do what I did and go to westshorehome.com slash Ross, whether you want new windows, which I haven't done yet, but I will, new showers, tubs, which I've done two in the same day, which was amazing, or a new door entryway, which I did uh, Wednesday, January 31st, which was incredible. I am a gigantic fan of this company. I actually now know uh, the owner of the company. He's a listener to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. How cool is that? So we have a listener-owned business that is advertising on the show. So support listener-owned businesses to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. And honestly, just get the free estimate so you know whether you do it now or later exactly how much it would cost you. WestShoreHome.com slash Ross. All right. So the first quarter was interesting. It, you know, the, the thing that's really crazy about the Chiefs, Jack, is that it feels like these other teams can, like, dominate the game at times against them, and they still find a way to win. The The Niners marched on that first drive until Christian McCaffrey fumbled, unfortunately. Uh, next drive, Trent Williams had multiple penalties. But the thing was, the Niners were totally dominating the first quarter. Like, you look at plays and first downs and yards – and it was still 0-0. Then early in the second quarter, you know, Moody crushed that Super Bowl record field goal. The short it's got to be like one of the shortest Super Bowl records ever. Jack, you're a you're a stat nerd, you're into stuff like that. That's got to be one of the, the the shortest times a guy has ever held an all-time Super Bowl record. I mean, unbelievable. But anyway, Moody crushed like a 55-yarder. And then what's really crazy is Tyshawn Gibson Badly, I thought Romo was really good on this, badly misplayed a terrible throw from Mahomes. Like, Tyshawn Gibson should have intercepted it. He didn't know the ball was coming. So he, he like, lost the ball in the air. So it's a bomb to, I think that was McCole Hardman too, wasn't it, Jack? I think so, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Jets legend, McCole Hardman. Jets, this guy can't play a lick for the Jets, and he can catch bombs and score the game-winning touchdown in the Super Bowl for the Chiefs. I mean, if that doesn't tell you something, I don't, I don't know what does. Unbelievable. So, at any rate, um, but then on the very next play, Charvarius Ward sh- like ripped the ball away from Pacheco. So, it was like no harm, no foul for the Niners in that regard. I'll say this too, in the first half at some point, right after the Pacheco fumble, Travis Kelsey bumped into Andy Reid. Thought that was a really bad look for Travis Kelsey. Really bad look. I mean, I don't care how fiery you are. I don't care how much of a competitor you are. You don't do that. You don't make physical contact with your coach, especially a guy in his 60s who's overweight. I mean, what are we doing? Shout out to Andy Reid for the contact balance. I mean, Andy Reid had some legit contact balance there. Can you imagine how big of a deal, Jack, that would have been if he got knocked over? Can you even imagine? Would have been bad. One of, like, the worst things ever. Speaking of one of the worst things ever, I was so upset by the Dre Greenlaw non-contact injury. I mean, so upset by that because I love the way Dre Greenlaw plays. Dre Greenlaw plays for keeps. He is a, 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 I I think he's a star player. And I'll say this, if you watch the rest of the game closely, his absence really did hurt the uh, 49ers after that. That, that was a huge difference in the game. Extremely unfortunate to tear your left Achilles on a non-contact injury running on the field 
after a good special teams play for the next series because you're excited. Just brutal. At any rate, the uh, the Niners were able to go on a nice drive after that. And kudos to Kyle Shanahan for that throwback pass from, you know, he, he threw it from Purdy, Juwan Jennings, it was a lateral. Then Jennings, the former high school quarterback, throws it to McCaffrey. And the, and the Niners were up 10 nothing. The Chiefs then, uh, by the way, there was a bad penalty, I don't know if I said this or not, by Legereus Sneed, which led to that Jawan Jennings um, touchdown pass to, to, to McCaffrey, which was awesome. Then the Chiefs finally kind of got a drive going and marched at the end of the first half with a field goal to make it 10-3. And that was the score at halftime. The Chiefs got the ball to start the second half, and Mahomes did something very uncharacteristic. I mean, Jack, Travis Kelsey was wide open, and Mahomes had a terrible pass that was intercepted by Jair Brown, but the Chiefs held. That was a golden opportunity, I thought, for the 49ers to go back up by two scores, and they couldn't. You get get a turnover, Mahomes makes a mistake and throws a pick, and you get a turnover in Chiefs territory, you need points there. You absolutely need points there. Kyle Shanahan didn't run it at all. I thought that was a mistake. However, you know, uh, Wisnowski, the punter, pinned the Chiefs at the one-yard line, which was huge. And then, this, and then the Niners actually stuffed Pacheco on third and short, making the Chiefs go ahead and, and punt the ball. And then after that, there was not a lot for a little bit. You know, Debo had a non-contact hamstring injury, but he came back in the game. Chris Conley was out there making special teams plays for the the Niners. Chris Conley was a factor in that game. But then Mahomes' legs. I'm telling you, Jack, it's always Mahomes' legs. Always a major factor in these games are his legs. Mahomes' legs helped get Butker to kick the longest field goal in Super Bowl history. He beats out the record. And um, he beats out the record from Moody earlier in the game. So then it's 10-6. Then we had the play I talked about earlier, which I maintain was the biggest play of the football game. The muffed punt led to the MVS touchdown. I mean, what, what, what world are we living in? MVS and McCall Hardman catching touchdown passes in the Super Bowl. Anyway, MVS touchdowns. Then it was 13-10 Chiefs. To his credit, Purdy marched the Niners down the field for the Jennings touchdown after I thought Kyle Shanahan had a pretty gutsy fourth down conversion uh, to Kittle, but a bad moody extra point. And that was on him. Jay Feely did a good job with that. That was on the kicker. Yes, it was blocked, but he would have missed it anyway. I mean, it was low into the left. Terrible kick by Moody. Now, you don't really know how that would have affected decision-making later in the game, right? So then Mahomes to Kelsey and Watson um, on the drive led to a field goal 16-16. But the reality is, in my mind at least, I guess I feel like if the Niners had made the extra point, I don't think the Chiefs kicked the field goal there. I think Andy Reid goes for it if they were down four with whatever that was, five and a half minutes left to go or whatever. And then right after that, it was like a volleyball or tennis. It was like serves back and forth. Then the Niners drive, led by another uh, Jennings catch, led to another long Moody field goal, 19-16. But that was the key play. See, as much as I like Brock Purdy, as much as I like Kyle Shanahan, they had two golden opportunities to cement the game or give themselves a much better chance, and they didn't do it. Spag sent McDuffie on a blitz, which forced an incompletion on third down after the two-minute warning. These are the differences in these games. It feels like those are the plays that Mahomes makes and that the Mahomes and the Chiefs, I should say, make, and the Chiefs were not able to make with, or I'm sorry, the Niners were not able to make in that situation. So they had to settle for the long field goal. Mahomes did what he does. 
goes down the field, including a couple plays to Kelsey, tying field goal 19-19. We go into overtime. Now, overtime decision, a lot of people are talking about Jack. That is an interesting one. You know what else is interesting? Heart disease is the number one cause of death in the U.S. due to the often invisible risk factors. One in five heart attacks occur with no recognizable signs or warning. Moreover, Having conditions such as diabetes or high blood pressure can increase your chance of a heart attack by up to 2x. With the big game upon us, heart attack risk can more than double when your home team is playing. We're encouraging all sports fans to learn about their personal heart risk factors so they can keep their hearts in the game. To help educate on those risks, Bear Aspirin created the Bear Aspirin Heart Risk Assessment Tool. The tool quickly assesses an individual's personal risk of developing cardiovascular disease so that they can discuss their heart health risk factors with a healthcare professional as part of ongoing health management. Learn more and assess your risk factors at checkyourheartrisks.com. A lot of people probably, Jack, were assessing their heart risks during overtime, including on the decision that Kyle Shanahan made to take the ball. I think you can make an argument either way. I really do. I've seen a lot of smart people talking about it. The fact that you're you're getting the third possession when it goes sudden death, if it goes sudden death in the third possession, means I probably lean that way. Certainly, you have the information advantage. If you get the ball second, like the Chiefs did, because you can, you have to go for on fourth downs, right? Whereas for the Niners, you have the third possession advantage if there is a third possession, which there wasn't. I didn't have a problem with it. I don't, I don't, that, I don't think that's something to dwell on, although I'm sure people will. Purdy made several clutch plays, I felt like, on that drive. But again, Chris Jones pressures Purdy on third down, So the Niners had to kick a field goal, 22-19. And to me, like at that point, it it really does feel like with Patrick Mahomes, he is that good. He is the new Tom Brady, maybe even better in some ways because he can use his legs. So it just felt like you're almost delaying the inevitable because Mahomes able to use his legs on the overtime drive as Andy Reid, I felt like, was ahead of Steve Wilkes. I thought on that final drive, Steve Wilkes had some opportunities, including when MVS lost four yards. I did not care for some of the play calls by Wilkes. Andy Reid had a good beat on it. Mahomes so calm when he's being pressured or blitzed. He either just buys a little bit of time and throws it for a first down, or he runs with his legs. They go down. I will say this, Jack. I was a little confused myself with the timing on the clock at the end of um, at the end of the first uh, at the end of the overtime. You know what I mean? Like I was like, wait a minute, what exactly happens here? I was not. We've never had it happen before in the NFL. Um, so I thought that was interesting that you know time wasn't a factor in the sense that the Chiefs get the opportunity to complete their drive there. Um, so if they, let's say it went into the second quarter of overtime and they kick a field goal, then the game continues from there. Um, and it's just sudden death from that point, which I thought was interesting. All in all, um, fantastic football game, uh, loved, you know, being able to work and be in the studio for CBS for it. anything I missed, Jack, any other takeaways on your end? Who was the MVP? Obviously Mahomes. Yeah, it had to be Mahomes. I mean, it could. I think could have made argument for Jake Moody if the game went the other way. But yeah, it had to be Mahomes. Did you get? Did you get to watch any of the commercials? Any quick commercials that stood out to you? <clears throat> uh, yes, we. I got to see like the national ones, but not the local ones. I think the one that jumped out to me the most was probably Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, and Tom Brady for uh, Dunkin' Donuts. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. I, How I don't about know you? Timo, there, there was this thing called Timu. I don't know what Timo is. I saw it like seven different times. Do you have any idea what Timu is? No. Did you see? Do you know what I'm talking about though? No. I it I was like I, I think it's like a shopping website, but they literally like five, so, six, seven commercials. It was oh, it was a lot. That's like thirty five million dollars. No, right? that's why I was so shocked. 
<laughs> that is un- – well, there's a lot of people like you right now saying, what is Timo? And looking it up, and boom, they got what they wanted, and we finished the show up right. I think we're done here. Thanks for tuning in to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also check out Even Money, Fantasy Feast, and College Draft, all on the DraftKings Network, YouTube, or subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform. Shout out to MyFrontPageStory.com. You know how I feel about it. You know how I feel about sending you guys signed autographs. So do it. BackOfficeSchedule.com, SteakhouseSports.com, HumanHeadNYC.com, Sportaculture, Pizza Boy Brewing.